Hey guys, I'm Stephanie from thepetitesoas.com and I'm really excited to be here today with you for the first day of the Marin Swimsuit Sew Along. So welcome! Um, I blog over at thepetitesoas.com and um, that's where I share lots of um, inspiration for women's and children's garments, mostly little girls garments, and um, a lot of tips and tutorials. Um, I love teaching people how to sew. I'm a sewing teacher here locally and um, I love sewing with knits, so I'm really excited to get to do this sew along with you. Um, so first of all, I wanted to say thank you to Sew a Little Seam for letting me choose their pattern. Um, I really love this pattern and all of the options that it has, so um, it is such a great pattern and I'm excited to sew it with you. Um, and I also wanted to say thank you to Fabric Fairy for um, asking me to host the sew along. So um, let's talk about the... Let's talk about swim knits for a minute. So um, I think a lot of people have this idea that sewing with swim knits is really hard. Um, some people who've never sewn with knits are rightfully a little bit scared, but um, sewing with swim is just different than sewing with wovens or sewing with other knit fabrics. And all you need are the right tools and um, a little bit of instruction and you can come out with a really great garment that you're proud to wear. Um, I started sewing with Swim about six years ago. I got sick of trying to find what I wanted in the store and um, I was really surprised that I actually came out with a garment that fit. Um, so I've never, I've never had a problem getting a garment that fit if I used quality materials and a good pattern. Um, and I have a great little guide on my blog that you should check out. It's called 10 Best Secrets for Sewing Swimwear, and I'll put a link to that below. So check that out before you even um, start sewing. Make sure that you've got the proper needles, make sure you know what to look for in swimwear and where to find your materials. Um, the Fabric Fairy has um, all the materials you'll need to make your garment, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, Let's see, let me go through this. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the pattern now. Um, if you haven't purchased your pattern yet, you can go ahead and um, find the link um, that I've included with this video. And um, I put a little affiliate link down there, so you can, you're welcome to order that with my affiliate link. And there's also a awesome coupon code that we'll post in the group here in the event. Um, so make sure to get your pattern on sale. And there's also going to be a, um, a sale for fabric for the Fabric Fairy. So um, all of that information is gonna be located in the Fabric Fairy Facebook group. And um, so I've got my pattern here on my computer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go through this with you guys. Um, so I'm here on page two of the pattern and it goes over um, all of the wide strap options first. So this pattern has wide strap options and it also has narrow strap options and they're listed separately. So you'll see first that you need to choose your length. So you need to choose, do I want a one piece? Do I want a tankini or a bikini? And then um, you'll choose uh, to have a peplum or not. You'll choose your front, what kind of neckline you want in the front and um, your back, what kind of neckline you want in the back. And then you'll choose your bottoms. So obviously if you chose a one piece, you won't need to do this step. Um, but if you decided to do a tankini or a bikini, you'll choose um, what cut you want for your legs and um, if you want low or high rise for your bottoms. And then when we go on to page three and we get to do it all over again for those of you that are doing the narrow strap options. So I'm actually going to be choosing the narrow strap options for my swimsuit. I'm going to be making a two-piece tankini and I've chosen to do the mid-V front and for the back I'm going to be doing the halter open back probably with like the crisscross straps and then I'll be doing the mid-cut leg with um, probably, probably the high waist. We'll go with that, the high waist. Um, and the fabric that I've chosen is really fun. So I've got 
I've got this swim knit. I've got a couple of swim knits actually. I'm going to do some contrasting fabrics this time. And I've got this um, cute little navy with some diamond, white diamonds. And then I've got um, this pretty, uh, I think it's called apple red. Yeah, the apple red for my bottoms. And those are, um, I just picked those up on the website. And um, those are nylon lycra. Okay, so sometimes with swim knits, you'll see them labeled as polyester lycra or nylon lycra. I usually go with the nylon lycra because it's mostly what I find and I'm familiar with it. Um, but if you find swim knit that is polyester lycra, you're welcome to use that as well. Um, and then this is the lining that I'll be using. So swim lining is a lot thinner than um, regular swim knit, and that's, that's a good thing. That's what you want. So it's stretchy. Um, but it kind of provides a firmness that kind of holds you in and it also you kind of you'll line the um, the crotch area with it um, and a couple more materials that you're going to need for your project um, throughout the pattern it calls for a quarter of an inch um, swim elastic swim elastic is going to be different than um, regular elastic so make sure that you get swim elastic this Swim elastic from the Fabric Fairy is not, um, doesn't have cotton on it. Most of the swim knits I've used in the past do have cotton, but this one doesn't. And I kind of prefer this one because it's a little bit thinner. Um, but I think I got three or four yards of it. Um, you'll have to check your pattern to see what you need specifically for your size and your options. And then for, um, for the waist, you're going to need half an inch swim elastic. And you'll need some for the under bust area as well. So I got both of those. And then the last thing you're going to need is um, some swim cups. So you don't have to use swim cups. I do recommend them though because um, they provide a little bit of, of modesty and a little bit of light support. Um, so, so yeah, that's all you need for your materials. Make sure that you've got um, regular polyester thread. That's what I use for all of my swim knits. and. Um, I prefer the stretch needles. I know some people like to use ballpoint, but stretch really, it really is better for um, sewing with knits. You might get more slip, slip stitches if you decide to use ballpoint. So um, th that's it for your materials. And now let's talk about choosing a size. So um, it's really important to get accurate measurements when you're sewing pretty much any garment, but especially knits, because it's gonna be right close to your body. So when you're taking measurements, you are um, going to want to be seated. Um, not a lot of people know that. For especially your waist measurement and your hip measurements are going to change when you sit down and you want them to be big enough to go all the way around your body. Um, so you, for this pattern you're going to need to take your bust measurement, your waist measurement, your hip measurement, and a girth measurement. And a girth measurement goes across your shoulder and underneath your crotch and back over again in a loop. And that's really important for determining whether or not you're going to need to lengthen or shorten your pattern um, based on the height that it was drafted for. And um, there are some other measurements provided here that are really helpful, but I've just kind of mentioned the main ones. There's also um, your thigh measurement and that'll help you determine, you know, your leg hole that you might need to make that bigger or smaller depending on your measurements. And I love this pattern because it, it provides a lot of size options. A lot of times with um, like patterns you would buy at the store, maybe at your Joann's or wherever you buy patterns, you would have to buy um, two different patterns if you wanted to get all of these sizes. And here we've got bust sizes 32 to 48. So that covers a lot of people. <clears throat> so I'm gonna move on to the next page. We're on page five. And um, let's talk about making adjustments. So when you adjust for length, you're going to have to splice your pattern and add length. And when you um, remove length, which is what I have to do because I'm five foot two, um, you fold the pattern and um, there's more specific instructions in the pattern for how to do that. Um, grading is so, so important. This is why I sew because I am two sizes smaller in my bust than I am in my, my waist. And we're not all the same size. We're not these cookie cutter sizes and that's what makes us unique. So um, it makes sense to sew for that. So 
um, check out your measurements and see where they fall. If they fall, if all of your measurements fell under one size, then you don't have to grade. But if your measurements fell under several different sizes, then you would be able to grade your pattern so that it would fit you correctly. All right, and full bust adjustment. So on page six, it goes over how to do a full bust adjustment. And this is a really easy adjustment that you can make. There's um, other types of FBAs that are more complicated, but this one's really simple. So give it a go if you need to do that. And we did talk about fabric already. Um, I didn't talk about power mesh though. So if you um, need a little extra support, maybe in the midsection or in the bust, um, you can purchase power mesh and that is available from the Fabric Fairy as well. And um, fabric yardage. So this is the fun part, guys. Um, getting your fabric, figuring out how much fabric you, you will need to buy. So each option is listed with how much fabric it's going to take up. And if you did a peplum, you're going to need extra fabric. So you need to kind of take a tally sheet and add up how much fabric you need. And um, really the same thing goes for figuring out your elastic. I can't give you an amount for how much elastic you'll need because it depends on the size you choose and it depends on the options that you choose. So uh, let me see if I can find that for you. Elastic measurements are on page 12 and 13 and 14. Yeah, 14. So 12 through 14, you'll find the strap uh, measurements there. And I had to keep a tally sheet and added up everything I was going to need. All right, let's go back here. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about printing. So make sure that when you print your pattern, you're doing it in Adobe, not in your internet browser. And you'll have to check that one inch square. It's very important. Even if your, your pattern is a 1 16th of an inch off, it will affect whether or not it fits you. So print that page first, measure it, make sure it's an inch, and then you can continue with printing the rest of the pattern. Um, I Definitely recommend that you use layers. Um, you don't need to print all of the sizes, just the ones you need. And the same goes for the pages that you print. You shouldn't need to print the entire pattern. Just print the pages that you need. And there is a chart list on page eight um, that goes through all of the options and will tell you exactly which pages that you need to print out. I usually keep like a little sticky note and I'll write down the pages I need. And then I can, excuse me, I can put that into my printer and then I'm good to go. Um, so as far as piecing it together, you'll just cut and piece them together. I like to use tape. Some people like to use glue and, um, there are cutting guidelines on page nine and 10. And, um, I think that's about it for today. We'll just, uh, leave it there, but I hope this was helpful for you. Please, um, let us know what fabric you're using. We'd love to see your fabric and um, you know talk about um, any questions that you have below. And we'll look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow for um, a little rundown of cutting out the fabric. So we'll see you then.